In this lesson we're going to be continuing our look at solving quadratic equations. In particular though we're going to be looking at quadratic equations that are in vertex form and solving from there or using something that we're going to introduce here which is called the quadratic formula which actually comes from vertex form. Now this first exercise you don't actually need to put it into vertex form but I'm starting with that. You, a lot of times you'll just be given the equation in vertex form. So I'll start with y equals x squared minus 12x plus 32. And to put that into vertex form, I need to look at this value from the middle, this negative 12. I want to divide that by 2, giving me negative 6. And then I take that value, negative 6, and I square it, giving me positive 36. So to put that into vertex form, what I do is I keep the first two terms, the quadratic term and the linear term, and then I do what's called completing the square. I want to create a perfect square trinomial. And plus 36 would be what I need to take those three into a perfect square. But I can't make 36 appear out of nowhere, so I subtract 36. And then I have this plus 32 on the end. Those three are a perfect square tri trinomial. So now I get y equals, these three together are x minus 6 all squared. And on the end I've got minus 36 plus 32 gives me minus 4. So that's A, that's just a quick refresher on what I mean by completing the square. Worth reviewing anyway because the idea of completing the square is also where the quadratic formula comes from. Okay, let's take a look at part B now, which is just to solve for y equals 0. So I'm going to set y equal to 0. And I'm going to just reorder this, if you don't mind. So rather than write it with the 0 here, I'm going to write x minus 6 all squared minus 4 equals 0. Now to solve this, I want you to imagine what if I had something like a squared minus 4 equal to 0? There's a couple of ways you could solve this. You could actually solve this by factoring a difference of squares. But a more obvious way of solving this is simply to write this as a squared is equal to 4. So essentially to isolate the variable, or in this case the variable squared. And then to get a on both sides, I would need to take the square root of both sides. But when you do that, when you take the square root of both sides, so for example, if a squared equals 4, then a equals the square root of 4, you have to consider both a positive and negative solution to this. Now, let me just finish this off, and then I'll explain why, that's, why that has to be the case. So the square root of 4 is a perfect square, so that's plus or minus 2. Now, why does that make sense? Well, the reason is because I want something that I square and that gives me an answer of 4. So looking at this line, something squared gives me an answer of 4. Well, if I put in 2 and I square it, 2 squared is equal to 4. If I put in negative 2 and square it, that's also equal to positive 4. So there are actually two possible answers to this quadratic equation. So if we extend that now, and now we're going to isolate the x minus 6 all squared. We're going to treat this like our a value, and that's equal to 4. Then I take the square root of both sides in order to get rid of that squared term, but I have to write this as plus or minus the square root of 4. Then I will simplify that. I'll write that as plus or minus 2. And at this point in time, we have to split things off because I have two options here. I have the plus 2 option and the minus 2. So I rewrite these as two separate equations. x minus 6 equals positive 2 and the x minus 6 equals negative 2. This one gives me x equals 8. This one gives me x equals negative 2 plus 6 is positive 4. And so there are my two answers using vertex form to solve. Now it turns out this example I gave, x squared minus 12x plus 32, is actually factorable. We could have solved this by going to factored form as well. But that will only work when the answers work out to be 
integers or rational numbers. So for example, if we'd gotten an answer like 3 over 2. If you get answers like that, then that means that you could have factored. But if you ended up with an answer like the square root of 17, there's no way you could have found this answer using factored form. It's not possible. But you could find it using vertex form. And you can also find it using the other uh, item that I'm going to show you today, which is the general quadratic equation, or sometimes known as the quadratic formula. So if you're in a situation where, first of all, you can't factor, you do have the option, and I guess I should really should have included this here. If factoring is not possible, use the quadratic formula, or you could also try to put it into vertex form. So don't ignore that as an option as well. But usually we will resort to the quadratic formula if the numbers are particularly uh, difficult to deal with and maybe even vertex form doesn't look like a very good option. Uh, well, the word of warning that goes with this is when students learn the quadratic formula, they tend to just want to use it all the time. And using the quadratic formula, while it's a useful tool, it is the crudest tool that you have in your quadratic kit in the sense that using this does not give you the chance to show that you understand very much math. It's very blind and so you have to be ready for for example a math teacher not to give you full credit for using this formula where something better would be appropriate. If you just blindly apply this formula you'll probably get a lot of correct answers but you shouldn't expect to get full marks. There are times, however, when this is absolutely the right thing to do. And so developing your math school skills involves figuring out those times. Now I'm not going to go through the derivation of this. For the textbooks that were the textbook that we're currently using, there is a derivation, as I've shown here on page 337 and 338. Um, another thing to note is the quadratic formula is based on standard form. So it's, it is derived from vertex form, or sorry, it is derived from standard form going to vertex form with these letters A, B, and C. So starting with this and then switching to vertex form. That's why A, B, and C here are the same A, B, and C from standard form. And as I mentioned on the previous example, the plus minus symbol that we get in our solution, so this plus minus symbol, which is here, that just means that there are two possible answers. And this plus minus came about in the exact same way, which was we were getting rid of a squared term by taking a square root. So there are two possible solutions. One of them has a plus sign here. One of them has a minus sign here. Notice that the minus sign in front of the B here is always minus. That part doesn't change. So let's go ahead and put this one into practice. Let's see what this is going to look like. Just a little reminder over here to the side. So I'm going to solve this using the quadratic formula. It might not be the worst idea, especially when you're new to this, to write out what is your A value. Well, in this case, there's an A value of 1 in front. What is your B value? That's the coefficient of the x term. That's negative 4. What is your C value? That's equal to negative 3. So I write this as my solution. x is equal to negative B. So that's going to be negative but b is negative 4 itself. I think I'm going to need some more room here. Let's uh, move these over. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, that's going to be negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 3. All divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. Now you can split this whenever you like. We're eventually going to have to split the plus and minus into two different expressions, but it's not a bad idea to simplify it first. So negative of negative 4 is just positive 4, plus or minus. Negative 4 all squared is 16. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 3, that's going to become plus 12. And don't forget that was under a square root sign, over 2. And one last simplifying step before I split it off. 16 plus 12 is equal to 28 
divided by 2. So I'm going to have to do this over to the side here. So what is one of my possible answers? Then I'm going to introduce a different way of saying this now. So x1, that's one of my possible answers. So that's going to be 4 plus the square root of 28 divided by 2. Or my second answer, x2, is equal to 4 minus the square root of 28 divided by 2. And you can see pretty awkward answers. 28 is not a perfect square, so I'm not going to be able to reduce this down to, um, uh, to just an integer value. And so with those two possible answers, um, there's no way we would have come up with this from factoring, which means actually that although there are two possible roots to this, two possible zeros, we never could have found them by factoring. We could have found these by completing the square, because the quadratic formula is completing the square and then solving. Let's take a look at this next one. So again, I'm going to go ahead and write out my a value is equal to 1. Maybe I'll do it sideways. My b value is equal to negative 2. My c value is equal to negative 5. So x equals negative b, but b is negative 2. Let me bring down the... Um, formula so we can refer to that on the side. So negative b, so that's negative of negative 2, plus or minus b squared is going to be inside the square root. That's negative 2 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 5. If you choose to do it the way I'm doing it here, I like to write out my terms and then I can write my square root sign because you need your square root sign to be long enough to cover everything under the square root. So I like to do that last. And then over 2 times a, which is 1 again. Negative of negative 2 is positive 2. Plus or minus, negative 2 all squared is 4. And then I've got a negative and a positive and a negative, so I'm going to have plus 4 times 5 is equal to 20. Don't forget your square root all divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. And so last simplifying step, plus or minus, square root of 24, all divided by 2. And so this means I have two solutions. My first solution is 2 plus square root of 24 divided by 2, or x2 is equal to 2 minus square root of 24 divided by 2. Okay, and that's it. Fairly short lesson, and uh, there's the homework.